So what is selling really about? Is it about you? Is it about the money? Is it about the commission? Or is it about the customer? Let's dive into it and see what we come up with. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Neil Winteregg, joined as always by Dr. Greg Winteregg, CEO of Matterhorn Business Development and author. You can find out more about his book, Fun at Work, down below. It's on Amazon, Audible, iTunes, wherever you buy books, it's there. Uh, today, we're gonna actually go back and kind of talk about an old video that was shot. I think it was technically video number one on this channel. Yeah, I don't uh, think we had any subscribers. We had zero. I was a subscriber. <laughs> That's right. And my mom. Yeah. <laughs> Me and grandma watched it. That's right. um, she loved it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just really was like from the very beginning of this YouTube channel. And so uh, we want to bring it up and talk about it again, which is kind of the topic around like what is selling? So what is the process of selling? Why are we selling? What are we doing? And I think the original was just you talking yeah. by yourself. So now we want to talk about it. And we might have hit on this point in other videos, but as a salesman, you have to have your attention on a few specific things. So I'm going to turn it over to Greg here. Yeah, this bears repeating. Um, there's, there's so much misinformation out there that I find absolutely frustrating being taught in the arena of sales. And... Um, I, I spoke once to a Ford dealer. This has been years ago. They counted, they expected 95% of the sales reps in January to not be there at the end of the year. A 95% turnover. That is just so destructive to a business. So one guy makes it 12 months, basically. Right. right. Well, five <laughs> out of 100 will make it for, for a year. And because the training, first of all, it's not that the sales trainers are bad. It's just that it's bad information. And so number one piece of bad information is ABC, always be closing. Mm -hmm. So when a prospect is approaching you, you're like, how am I going to close this guy? You don't know their name. You don't know why they're approaching you. They might be asking for directions. You, you haven't even gotten into communication yet. So number one, number one is, and we've kind of spun this around. I'm not the only one. Always be caring. So if somebody is approaching you, you have to care about that person and they are approaching you. Why? Because they have a problem. They have a problem that they're trying to solve and they're looking to you as the sales representative, as the professional to help them solve their problem. So I want you to just consider just switching your viewpoint. Now, listen, I understand it's holidays. You need money. Uh, many of you are commissioned sales reps. Uh, you have a business. So I understand there is that pressure to produce as a sales rep. But you have to forget about the money. You have to forget about the commission and just have your attention on helping the customer solve their problem. So that should be priority number one. Neil started selling when he was 16. He came into the management company and he's 16, he's talking to doctors on the phone. And so Neil was taught from the beginning, interview the doctor, find out what the problem is. Here are a couple of areas that this seminar will help them in and then just tell them how they're gonna get help. I mean, my, my rule is I never give pricing or talk about pricing unless I really, 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 really have to. Um, when somebody says, whether it's on the phone or in person, well, yeah, but, but how much does something like that cost? Whether it's any of my businesses. I say, well, you know, there's a few variables. I like to get some information first, see what you need, see if you need anything at all. And, you know, how, why would this help you? I would instantly take my answer and put it right back onto them. Mm -hmm. And I would talk to them for an extra 30 or 40 minutes before price came up again. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody's like, yeah, but how much is it? But how much is it? But how much is it? I already know I don't want to work with this person because they're all about price and I'm all about, do you need the product that right. I have to offer? When it's all just about, all about the price, all about the price, all about the price, I really don't wanna work with this person anyway because they're more about cost and I'm more about what can I do to help this person. So usually when I'd give them a price, I had no intentions of ever selling them or closing them because I knew they really didn't have any intention of ever buying it because I'm never the cheapest guy around. I already know that. So- and, you know, this was, this was a few years ago we were looking at putting together and we have put together different courses on selling, but just to make sure that I understood what the man in the street is looking for during the sales process, I sent a professional over to Clearwater Beach 
on a Sunday afternoon to interview a hundred people. And I chose Clearwater Beach because there are people who ride the free trolley over there. And then there are people who spend $40 to park their Mercedes across the street. So we have just a broad Heinz 57 variety of the man on the street there. And something very interesting, one of the questions was, what do you find most valuable when you are going to buy something? When you are being sold, what is infinitely important to you is exactly how it was stated. Like what is extremely important? And I knew it was gonna be money. I just thought a third to a half would say the price, the price, the price. Well, here was the stunning result. 39 out of 100 said they wanted the sales rep to be caring and friendly. 19% said product knowledge of that sales representative was the most important. Price came up, guys, six times. Well, people definitely want to have an idea of how much something is going to cost. If you walk into a Ferrari dealer, you know you're going to be spending more than if you walk into the Chevrolet dealer to buy a Corvette. So you have to have a bit of a range, which is fine. But I'm like Neil, I'll say, well, you know, we have a whole range of products and services. Let's find out a little bit more about the problem you're trying to solve. Tell me about the problem. And then when they tell you about the problem, how is this adversely affecting you? On a scale of one to 10, how important is it for you to handle this? Because it's all about the problem and how much pain are they in? And I even joke around with some people. I say, well, are you, are you sitting on a tack or a nine inch nail? They both hurt, but one is extremely more painful than the other. So I'm trying to find out some emotional response as to how big of a deal it is for them to solve this problem. And Neil is as good as anyone I've ever seen at just really diving in and getting all the details about the problem. And if somebody is one of these six percenters, that's just all about the money, all about the price, Neil and I are just very brassy and bold. Say, you know what? If you're looking for the cheapest guy around, uh, we're probably not your man. And then we just move on. Well, he and I have been working together for a long time and people know that I'm his son and he's, you know, the owner of whichever business it is I'm representing at the time. And so when people want a discount and I tell them that I can't give them a discount, the answer I always get from the dirtiest of them all is we'll call your dad and work something out. And I just look at him and I go, there's no way I'm calling him because he would laugh in my face. <laughs> and that's when I'm totally done with somebody because I'm not there to make money. I'm there to solve their problem. I'm just laughing. Not only would I laugh in your face, you'd get a big long lecture. So. Yeah, I would. I, I'm like, I'm it not would even... actually be a rant. Yeah. Have I not taught you anything in 17 years? Come but on. I wouldn't even call him no. because it's ridiculous to even call him. Right. So, so I guess to kind of summarize this video without, you know, rambling on and on, the whole idea is when a prospect is approaching you or you're approaching a prospect, you introduce yourself, you're kind and friendly. 39 out of 100 wanted somebody who was friendly. And then you say, well, how can I help you today? What's the problem that you're trying to solve? You must have product knowledge. That was 19 out of 100 wanted product knowledge. So if you are kind, friendly, and you have product knowledge, now you've handled about 60% of the prospects and what they're looking for. Only Remember, only 6% really are looking, and I've, I've done this actually with other clients and had them do surveys on, on their patients, on their customers. It doesn't ever go over 7%, just so you know. It's more than one time. So my suggestion is if you wanna be successful in sales, help the customer solve their problem, and then work out the finances after that. And my last thing that I wanna say on that is that I've met a lot of really good salesmen and people that could really make a lot of money, but, um, just charging people based off of money and overcharging because you know this person has money or whatever. I know people who do that. Um, they're not, you know, yeah, they can sell, but uh, they're not taking care of their customers in that situation. So I don't consider that a good salesman. I consider a good salesman somebody who can actually sit down, find the problem and sell the product that the person needs at the regular price, the right price, the agreed upon price, not some upsell price that uh, just because you know this person has a lot of money, I will not work with people like that because that to me is not a salesman, that's a con artist and they give people like me and him a bad name and that's just the only other thing I wanna flip in there at the end. Good. So if you made it this far, hit the thumbs up, subscribe 
And uh, we will be around for the month of December doing two videos a week plus some live streams. And then in January, we'll be back to three videos a week, maybe some live streams as well. Right. We're growing. So we want to uh, hear from you. Let us know what you want us to talk about. And we'll see you next time.